Hi there. So it's Sunday and welcome to the Business Plugs Mixer. This Sunday starts the series of the journey that leads to a taping of a TV series. Have you ever wondered how the different fragments of your life come together? Like normally when I do this segment, I am I have my um, step and repeat behind me and it's very formal, it's very about the business. But this journey is a personal journey. This journey is about me and how I got invited to a national telev a television taping. And so I want to talk about the journey because so many times when we are having different phases of life, like we don't get to see how the different segments all line up. So for the next few weeks, I'm going to tell you different segments about my life um, and how everything has matched up. Like there are so many different things that I've, I've encountered that are probably extraordinary to some people and really unexpected to me personally. But I want to kind of encourage people about the journey and, and take you along the journey because where it will lead right now, I can't tell you, uh, but, but just hang on for the ride and let's talk about it. So what you see here is actually a picture of me at 10. I was living in uh, out of town with some cousins. My mom had died on Christmas Day, December of 1968. And why that is relevant to me, because right now we're going through the CV-19 virus. And back then, my mom died of the Hong Kong flu. Uh, she had the flu plus double pneumonia. She was 33 years old. I am her youngest child, her youngest daughter and youngest child. And I was nine years old. So as you can see from the, the picture, like me now, that was me at nine, nine uh, years old. And life has been <laughs> very, very uphills, downhills. Like there have been ebbs and flows. But I want to take you on the journey because I hope out of this, you are empowered to understand that regardless of how you start out, that you are so, so deserving of living your best life, like the best life that you are able to provide for you and your family. And even though it may seem like we get in valleys sometime, that even the valleys have purpose. So I want to take you through my life journey so you can understand how I started from here uh, as in the picture, that's me standing there, how I started from there to go on to have books in the Library of Congress and have a TED Talk and have these like really powerful life events, uh, experiences. And so that's what this is about. So like I said, this is the journey. This is the journey to a live TV show taping that's a popular TV show taping. And I just want to share my journey with the people who follow me and to encourage you that it doesn't matter where we start. After we become an adult, then the decision on what happens next, the, the ball is in our court pretty much. And we get to determine what that is. And so for that reason, I've stripped all the business stuff away. And I want to talk to you about how as humans, we move forward, right? Even in this, like my mom died of the Hong Kong flu and there were uh, six kids, my siblings and I, and my father who were all in the house with her because she became sick uh, while shopping for Thanksgiving dinner in November of 1968. And I can remember my brother and I going to the store with her, my brother Ed, who I lost last June, I can remember him and I being kids and going to the store with her and then her coming home and not feeling well, right? And so we were kids, we didn't understand what was going on. And I can remember her sending my siblings to the store to get what she thought would make her feel better, better which was grapefruit juice. And I can remember my, my siblings not ever experiencing grapefruit juice, not even knowing what grapefruit juice were was because we never had that in our house. And, but that was what she was craving or something she wanted. And she had difficulty getting them to understand exactly what it was she wanted. But I can remember being a nine-year-old kid 
And I can remember preparing for her services, her homegoing services, and people around us whispering and saying, oh, she's nine. She won't remember. Or, oh, she's uh, too young. This, this, She'll never remember what all this is about. And so, you know, I remember going through a haze, like understanding from the day that my dad came home and saying our mom wasn't coming back home. For in my child, like mine, my nine year old mind, what that felt like was that felt like me just say, uh, like she went to the store or something. Because up until that point, I had never experienced death ever. Like nine years old, our mother cuddled us, she kept us close and she kept us away from all the ugly, uh, the um, negative things that can happen in a person's life. So we didn't have like hatred or. Uh, at that time, we were in the civil rights era, but we were not directly uh, educated on what the civil rights era was. So we lived in a bubble pretty much uh, un up until she passed. And so when my dad said, well, mom's not coming home, it's like, OK, she's not coming home right now, but she'll be home soon. You know, by my, my nine year old mind, not understanding that that was permanent, not understanding that death was permanent. And so. It was just a um, high stressful time. Like there was a, a synergy in the house that wasn't a positive one. And so really not understanding that. So it feels like from that day until the day that I arrived in the back of the car heading to go stay with some relatives is, a, is almost a complete blank. Like I can't remember much of those days between that day, her funeral, and then after her funeral. And then the next thing I remember is being in the back seat of the car with my siblings and we're headed to go stay with relatives for a while. Uh, just understanding like what the laws were back then and understanding that my father being a single parent, having six kids, four that belonged to my mom and then two that belonged to him, that the system back there was set up to separate us. And so how he he had promised my mom on her deathbed that he wouldn't do that. And so he was taking us together to go stay with relatives for a while until the heat was off and ha having to him to make that decision on what happened to us next. I'm sure was traumatic because he had promised her that he wouldn't separate, you know, the children. And so trying to live up to that and trying to find a solution that was best for us. So for a year and a half, I lived in the country, like I lived outside of the city and learned about planting and country living and, you know, about growing and harvesting and very, very different environment from what we were used to, because again, our mother cuddled us. And so she did everything. I was nine years old and I never had to choose what I was wearing, like understanding fashion. Didn't have, we were, um, there were eight of us living in our house, our three bedroom house and didn't have real dolls because there was a lot of kids, like there were six of us. And so that's a lot of kids when only one of the parents is working. And so we didn't have the dolls where you learn how to do hair and braid and all that. We didn't learn that. We had paper dolls, which I loved. Didn't understand that that was a difference or that that was a cheaper option, but enjoyed them just the same. But because that was my life, then I never understood how to do hair. Like I've never been good at taking care of hair, you know, doing all the different processes, even though there's some basic things I've learned along the way. But that was not my life. <laughs> that was not how I, I was raised. And so learning to, to, to take care of my hair was a challenge. <laughs> I can tell you all oh, while growing up, some of my friends would have mercy on me and they would do my hair for me. So just understanding how that whole dynamic of losing my mom impacted us as children, understanding how the world is very different when you are a motherless child. Like I wrote a book and the book is entitled The Well Ran Dry Memoirs of a Motherless Child that talks about that period of my life from my frame of reference. And so just learning, you know, because we take for that for we take for granted when we have people in our lives forever. 
And so this season right here where we're going through this virus and things reminds me of what it must have been like because 33,000 Americans died during that period of time from October 1968 to March 1969. 33,000 Americans died because of that virus. And that was the same virus that took my mom out. And that's not to scare anyone or to heighten the already panic or fear that people have, but it's just that this period of time is like watching an adult version of what it must have been like back then for people who were trying not to get that flu because I never heard of the flu. Like I never saw a news report or, or us talk about, my parents talk about there was a flu epic. There was no conversation that I heard. And actually it wasn't until years later going around, right? And so that's later is when I found out. So just understanding that and then understanding how now, uh, my doctor friends tell me the safest thing is to boost our immunity so that we're able to fight off and ward off any of the viruses, right? Because you can't antibiotic them, <laughs> you know, they, they become strong and some are non-resistant to antibiotics, but just uh, working on our immune system, keeping ourselves socially distant, not going in crowds and just drinking plenty of fluids and just trying to get our our natural defenses up as much as we can is how we'll get through this. I am, I, I made it through that one. And here I am today, 60 years old. So that was 51 years ago, but made it through that one. And here today to try to help people uh, calm their fears and just learn about building our immunity and just learning about that we'll get through this. We will get through this. And so just to encourage you, as I take you on my journey, my name is Linda Murray Bullard. They call me the business plug. And so I am plugging you into the journey that's leading to me being at a live television taping uh, later. <laughs> and so we're going to walk through the journey. So again, that's the first picture I have of me after my mother passed. And just wanted to talk about that story and just to encourage people that it doesn't matter where you start, once you are of age to make decisions for yourself, then to be empowered by empowering yourself to make decisions that will help you to create the life that you want to live. Like I'm all about not having a life that I want to take a vacation from. Vacations are a part of my life because I love to travel. So just trying to understand how to make those things happen and how to take ownership of our lives and how to be in our best health and do the best we can to encourage one another and keep lifting each other up in prayer and in person. So yeah, so my name is Linda Murray Buller again, and I just came on. This is the Business Plugs Mixer. It's here every Sunday at seven. I was a little late getting it together because of a phone call I had to make right, right just like the minute before taping. But I wanted to share this with you and want to encourage you that we're going to get through this and we're going to keep ourselves safe and keep our babies safe and our families. And we're going to get through this together. So at that I'll sign off and hope you have a great week. Hope you have a blessed Sunday and we'll see you next week at seven o'clock. Stay vigilant. Bye.